Hey everybody, Mac here for OCR Kings and today we're going to talk about how to build Spartan Olympus. So about a year before this video was completed, we actually had Olympus built. We had it built to the old specifications. We went out to SoCal about a year later and we realized two major differences to Olympus. Number one, they made the angle more severe. Number two, most importantly, they gave it a slick, slippery surface. Use or build at your own risk. Using power tools is innately dangerous, so is lugging around heavy, tall, freestanding objects. Please keep small pets, children, onlookers, spouses, what have you, out of the fall line of either side of this obstacle. It can be set up by one person at a time, but it's best to have two people and make sure it is securely bolted before using. So here's our Spartan rig. It's basically three panels of the same thing. All right, I'm going to break it down and show you how to make one, and then you can make as many as you want. So this is how we started. We began with a four by eight foot long piece of plywood. This is five eighths inch thick. Okay, the thicker the better, but you don't want to go too crazy. It just creates more work and more weight. To it, we attached a two by four frame. All right, we have a complete two by four here. This is an eight footer, and we set it in the width of another two by four. We'll get to that in a second. So that's one and three quarters inches in. So you got two of those. And then we measured out and cut in the void. And we placed another two by four here. All right. You can figure that out basically by just attaching these first and then measuring in between. Now, the reason why we inset this one is because we have our legs on the outside. We want our obstacle to fold, sort of like a ladder. If that's unimportant to you, then don't worry about it. You, you can skip a whole bunch of these steps. But basically, take your two by four, attach your frame, measure, attach the frame here, and then down there. One caveat, make sure that all of your edges line up going the same way. We chose to make these flush with the top of the obstacle. This is the top, okay? Because your two by four is gonna actually hang off by like an inch or so at the bottom. So you don't want the inch to be on the top and then you'll be all uneven when you go to put the thing together. So keep these edges here flush with the top, okay? Especially with the two by fours. And keep your excess down at the bottom. Okay, so Damer's got our legs over here. This is on the back side of the obstacle. This being the front side, okay? We'll get to how we attach those in a little bit. Basically, for us, we're gonna use hex bolts all right, but you got to cut a wedge here if you want your uh, legs to fold. Again, if that's unimportant to you, you can just screw this in right here. And if you're going to use screws, you can take your frame and put it right to the edge. We didn't want to do that. We want our obstacles to sort of fade away in the woods. All right. So in the void here, that used to be six foot wide until Spartan changed the height and the uh, severity of the angle. So if I can pass this to Damer here. Smile, buddy. When we were in SoCal, coming against uh, the uh, updated obstacle, I wanted to see what the dynamics were, what the dimensions were. So I didn't have a tape measure, I only had myself. So I asked permission if I could lay down in the void, and the relative measurement was my heel to my armpit. And that turns out to be four and a half feet. Okay, you could correct for the angle. I don't use protractors or anything. You want your void in here to be four and a half feet. So we talked about the distance in between. All right, if you want to have folding legs, all right, it's best to put it on a pivot. This is a four inch long hex bolt with a one inch washer and nut. Okay, washer on both sides. You're going to want to drill a half inch diameter hole through both your leg and your frame. And the, the best way to do that is if we put those down. All right. And you get either a second set of hands or one of these and you just clamp it together. You're going to I think be better off with clamps because two guys could work doubly fast. 
All right, and you're gonna just measure six inches down from this edge to here and drill that way. All right, that'll come out here on the other side. Boom. Now for here, you'll notice that I chopped off two pieces. Top is that way. Two and a half inches down. And make a nice straight line across. That also is going to go. Okay, so in the end, it's going to look like that. And so that when you fold it, it doesn't get hung up on the point like that. Okay, so to get our four and a half feet of space, okay, between the, uh, the wall face and the legs, we need to set up our supports, okay, these lateral supports over here. I measured it out and it's roughly 42 inches from the bottom to our drill holes. Alright, so 42 inches from there, drill a hole, 42 inches from there, drill a hole. The other thing you could do too is just set the thing up like this. Put some clamps, get a level, make sure that's four and a half foot space and then just drill straight through and put your bolts so one other thing when you're setting this thing up these pieces are going to be side by side so you're going to want to take a one inch boring bit and sink these in so that the head of the bolt doesn't stick out and hit the one that's going to be next to it otherwise you'll have a void in between your wall faces. You want to do that for your legs up top and certainly for the inside, okay, the ones that are going to touch each other, your inside legs. Now the other thing, speaking of which, in the middles, okay, we have a three setup system here. All right, so we need two of these. We've got a seven inch hex bolt that's going to go through both middle cross supports and into the one next to it and it's going to create lateral stability and lock this thing down so that if you're on it you don't flip it over on top of yourself it's going to have the weight of all of the wall faces okay so seven inch in your middle supports connecting your walls so one of the most important parts of this whole thing are the handholds, the holes, and the chains, and figuring out the spacing. Basically what we did, again, using relative measurements, we watched our own videos, and using Damer's hands, okay, was able to figure out the distance between the things themselves and where they fell on the wall face. And in order to streamline the process, templated that out on a piece of cardboard. I know, super scientific, right? But this was something that we could use over and over again, and we basically took this and stapled it to the wall face and just drilled right through it. All right, so here it is. Now you're gonna need, obviously, a four foot piece of cardboard if you're gonna do this. If not, all right, from this edge, this handhold is six inches in and six inches down. That means Measure a line here, and a line here, six and six, handhold number one. We go all the way down to the hole, all right? To drill these, we use the three inch hole saw. That's gonna be 26 inches down to the top center of the hole, and 12, uh, excuse me, five inches in from this edge. 26, five, right to there. Chains we weren't originally going to put on, but we found a lot of value in them, so we relented and we put them on. These are 
14 inches down to the center of this hole and 12 inches in from this edge. Moving on, this hole. This is nine inches down to the center and 18 inches in from this edge. Nine, 18. Next climbing hole, straight from Walmart. I'll put the link in the description. All right? This is 18 inches down and 24 inches in. This is dead center of the board. All right? 18, 24. Now we're coming from the other side. Okay, the next is a chain. That's actually, we're gonna measure from this side. 14 inches in, 14 inches down. Next is this hole, right? That is 12 inches in, okay, to this side, 12 inches, 18, okay? 12, 18, go up to here. 18 to there, and the last is this handhold, just like the other one, but from the other way, we're measuring six inches in from that edge, six inches down. And okay, just like this one, this is six inches from here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You do this over and over again, and it really helps if you use your template, staple it on there, and drill right through the damn thing. Now the biggest difference to Olympus is the surface, okay? Spartan uses some sort of composite material that makes it really, really slick, okay? Especially when it's wet. How did we do that? I looked for a whole bunch of options, including this uh, like vinyl auto wrap, self-adhesive. Looks real, real cool. It was actually less slippery than the paint. So it was also expensive and it was a pain in the butt to put on. So I opted for paint, okay, from Krylon. This um, acrylic latex glossy black. Okay, it's roughly the same color as Spartans, but the glossiness of this paint, when it is wet, man, it is ridiculously slippery. So, thanks for watching, everybody. This has been Damer and Mac for OCR Kings, and reminding you, as always, train hard. Have fun. Have fun. That's hard. <laughs>